Welcome to week eight. We are previewing the week eight AFC home games and a couple of NFC home games sneaking in there as well. And we're answering some questions on today's show. And here we go, Jamie and Heath. Here are some questions. Can Russell Wilson rediscover his form in a foreign country? When you say his form, you mean his throwing form, his high knees form? <laughs> uh, what, which form are you referring to? His cooking form. I, I don't know. Could he be good, Russell Wilson? No. Okay. I mean, could he? Yes, obviously. But I. good luck trusting him. Uh, can you trust any Colts in the Sam Ellinger debut? Jonathan Taylor. Okay. How badly will the Bills beat the Packers, and will that matter for Devin Singletary? If I were the Packers, I would sit Aaron Rodgers in this game. Just say, you know what? Screw it. Get the thumb right. That's a joke, obviously. We'll answer that question a little bit later. Is it okay for me to make trades on a team that Heath and I share without consulting Heath? Uh, Well, you said when you made the – what was the trade you made earlier this season? You took Aaron Jones for Hopkins? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you didn't even bother to consult him because you said he, quote, checked out. That's right. I made another one this week. Um, to be clear, the, our only win this season, James Conner was playing on Thursday night football, ruled out, and at 5.30 on Thursday, I checked our lineup. James Conner was still in it. I put somebody else in for James Conner, and that's the only week we've won. So I you don't think, know that I've checked out. You think I would have left? It was 5.30. I don't check the lineup at 5.30. I would have checked it before 8 o'clock. Come on. And then, um, uh, and, the, and the bigger question is: Is it okay for you to be making trades on a team that's one and six in a ten-team league where four teams make the playoffs? I think it is. I, I'm having a lot of fun. I, I made a trade in that league two days ago. I made a trade in our other podcast league where I'm also one and six. Last that was week. a weird one. You traded an IR player, didn't you? It was offered to me. I got offered Garrett Wilson for Jamison Williams. He I traded the most droppable player in, in fantasy. <laughs> traded for the most droppable player in fantasy. Well, things have changed for Garrett Wilson. He's not a drop right now. All right, who are and last question before we get into it here: Who are the top two running backs in Dynasty? It's really good. Um, this I this one I guess just popped up because I asked it because the trade chart is coming out today, and um, I think right now it's Jonathan Taylor and Ken Walker. Hmm. You think, Jamie, Brees Hall out now with that ACL slash meniscus injury? Yeah, I mean, you've lost to- Brees Hall. You've lost Javante Williams. So you've lost two young running backs uh, for the potential start of the season. And who knows when they'll be back to what their form should be. Um, is, is Ken Walker now the number two running back in Dynasty? I mean, he's got to be better than Najee Harris at this point. So, you know, he was, he was for the most part, I would, I would think, right, the consensus number two for a big part of the Offseason? I went back and forth between Swift, Najee, and Javante in the offseason. Yeah. And then Hall jumped them all and yeah. then got hurt. And now Walker has. I guess the question would be is do they bring back Rashad Penny to whatever extent they bring him back to? Um, I don't have a problem with Walker, too. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing some comments here about how I have one win in two leagues. Why would anybody listen? Just so you know. Heath and I won the For the People podcast league last year, and Heath and I both made the finals in the other podcast league last year uh, as well. So just not a good year, and those, those are obviously my two. It weeks. happens. It happens, I guess, yeah. Jonathan, we have Jonathan Taylor in both of them, so that shouldn't be a huge shock, I guess. Yeah, I'll, t- I'll tell you a quick, quick uh, funny thing. So I mentioned my, my kid, my father-son leagues that I have, and I think I told you guys at the draft. So both both leagues, both one one pick six, one pick seven. Christian McCaffrey fell to both of them. They both took McCaffrey. Uh, second round, both had a choice of Saquon Barkley. One took Barkley, one took Aaron Jones. One is seven and zero. Oh, one's oh six and one. <laughs> Not because of that alone, but I mean that just goes to show you very similar starts, potential starts. Um, yeah. And one is doing much better than the other, and letting the other one know too. Yeah. Well, uh, perhaps we can do a kind of a mid season next week. Maybe we'll do a mid season checkup on our squads and our strategies of what's worked and what has not worked. All right, we got to talk about Thursday night football once again because I, I didn't even talk about Mark Andrews. I just assumed Mark Andrews was going to play. <clears throat> I don't know how you guys feel about him. He has not practiced. He did not have a catch last week. We don't know how much the knee injury played into that. Lamar Jackson only threw sixteen passes. But looking at the updated notes for tonight, Mark Andrews is questionable. Rashad Bateman is questionable, seems likely to play. Russell Gage is out. Julio Jones is a game-time decision. The Bucs are going to be without a lot of starters, including three members of their secondary, 
Luke Gottecki, their starting left guard. Cameron Braid is out. And Akeem Hicks, their starting defensive tackle, is doubtful. He's missed the last few games. But, Jamie, if we talk about Mark Andrews here, what should the Mark Andrews managers be doing right now? You should probably talk to Mr. Mark Andrews' manager himself. Um, I, I mean, you got to have a plan in place, you know. So uh, the one who's probably the, the two who are most widely available that I like the most, I think they're still under 10% roster, certainly under 20% rostered, is Kate Otten and um, uh, Jawan Johnson. Now, the Otten situation is very easy because you know he's playing tonight. You know there's a Cameron Brait, and you've seen what he's done in the two games that Brait has not played. So that's a, just an easy pivot. The Johnson one, it's a great matchup. The Raiders are uh, 29th in fantasy points allowed to opposing tight ends, fourth, fourth best in fantasy points allowed to opposing tight ends. Um, but you have to wait out the potential Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry, Adam Troutman situation. So if there's no Mark Andrews, you just pivot to Kate Otten, and I think that's the best way to go. Okay. Uh, Greg Dolcich is 45% rostered. I think you get like him better. I like Otten better in PPR like than Otten. Better. Okay. All right, Heath, any thoughts here on Mark Andrews? If he plays, I'm starting him. If not, Dulcich and Otten are the two top replacements. I prefer Dulcich in all formats, but they're both borderline top 12 guys who are better. Okay, if Andrews does not play, do you still start Lamar Jackson? And what would it mean for Devin DuVernay, for uh, for everyone, I guess? Heath, give me your thoughts on the Ravens offense if Andrews does not play. Du DuVernay is still just a desperation flex for me. I don't know, I have a good feel for what's going to determine his role. He's almost like Taysom Hill at wide receiver. He might have a, a huge play and score a touchdown or two, but you just don't know. Um, Lamar Jackson, I would sit him for Tua. Um, and if Andrews if, is out, it, right? If Andrews right is now, out. I have Tua ahead of him, period. Oh, wow. Um, with Andrews. Okay. Um, but that's the QB5 and QB7. I think if there's no. Andrews, you you start Brady over him. Um, I'd start Cousins over him, but I'm probably not going to get into the place where I'm starting Derek Carr or Daniel Jones over him. I got this question yesterday, uh, exactly those two quarterbacks with Tua and Lamar Jackson, and um, this is assuming a healthy Mark Andrews. Because I would agree with Heath, if there is no Mark Andrews, I start Tua. Um, the answer I gave it was to uh, Jeremy St. Louis, one of our hosts at, at CBS Sports HQ. I said, you you've seen the ceiling for both those guys. You know, and and Tua's got a fifty point game in his you know on his resume this season. But if Lamar Jackson's Lamar Jackson, he's going to be better than Tua. So you play Lamar Jackson over Tua. But but not if not if Andrews is out. That's only with Andrews. Yes, if there's no Andrews, then the ceiling gets lower. Right. All right. Um, okay. And then it becomes tricky because it's not just that you know Isaiah likely somebody that they they've shown you know uh, uh, a little of, uh, affinity for, but not so much since the preseason. And then uh, great DFS play regardless. Um, I'm, I'm doing my notes for, for the, the show later today as, uh, as we're doing this one. Uh, Isaiah, uh, Josh Oliver has gotten a few targets lately and a couple end zone ones. And he's $200 on DraftKings. So good cheap option if there's no market. And if Andrews doesn't play, last question here. If Andrews doesn't play and Bateman does play. No, Bateman just... tries in full Wednesday, so he's going to go. Okay. So... In this scenario, if Andrews is out and Bateman is in, and let's just hope Andrews plays and we don't have to go through this, but but in that scenario, I mean, does Bateman vault into your top 24? Would you start him over, say, a Cortland Sutton? No. No, because we still see what this offense is. It's, you know, Lamar doesn't feature those guys very much. You know, so it could be Bateman. It could be, you know, Duvernay. It could be a Deshaun Jackson night. You know, if he's active, it could be Demarcus Robinson. It could just be a lot of Gus. You know, Akeem Hicks not being there is big for Tampa. Yes, it is. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about this. Uh, the rest of the uh, slate for today's show. Eight games to preview. And they are Green Bay, Buffalo, Washington at the Colts, Denver at Jacksonville in London, New England at the Jets, Raiders, Saints, Pittsburgh at Philadelphia, Cincinnati at Cleveland, and Tennessee at Houston. Jamie, who do we love this week? Doesn't have to be. Sorry, it does not have to be from those eight games. Just wanted to give a little preview there of what we will be talking about. Who's our start of the week? Tony Pollard. Um, you know, just with the situation that popped up yesterday with Ezekiel Elliott not expected to play. I mean, clearly it's uh, it, it's it's low hanging fruit. I, I totally understand that, but um, you know, sometimes you take the layup when it's available to you, and the layup is Tony Pollard this week. So he's a top seven running back for me in PPR, top six in in non PPR. Uh, in non PPR, I would start him over Christian McCaffrey. Um, in all formats, I would start him over Jonathan Taylor. So I, I like the setup for him uh, taking on the Bears. They just lost a big piece of their defensive line. Robert Quinn getting traded to the Eagles. So, you know, you wonder where the mindset is of that defense. Uh, Roquan Smith, you know, basically crying on the podium yesterday when he found out the news, uh, you know, upset about losing one of his you know, buddies. 
So, you know, defense that's just been giving bleeding production to opposing running backs. You know, I like Zeke prior to the the news that, you know, I thought he was going to have a big game and Pollard as well as a, as a high end flex. But he's uh, he's in line for 20 plus touches. And I think in this offense, how they've been operating, the workload he's going to get the opportunity in this matchup. This is why you drafted Tony Pollard where he did. Yeah. And Zeke has not been ruled out. There was a report that he's like unlikely to play. Uh, they've got a buy next week, so it kind of makes sense for them to give him a little bit of a rest here. But I assume even if Zeke plays, you'd probably like Tony Pollard quite a bit because Zeke's definitely not going to be 100% healthy. 100%. Yeah. Great. All right, Heath, who do you love this week? Uh, Raheem Mostert, 20 touches last week, has at least 15 touches in each of his last four games. He's more involved in the passing game with four catches last week, and he actually has three targets in three of his last four and four of his last six, and the Lions are arguably the worst defense in the NFL. Yeah, we'll talk about that game tomorrow. But since you just, you know, since you won't be on the show, you like Mostert, you like Tua. Do you have any concerns that there won't be enough pass attempts for Tua? How much concern? Um, I think if there's not enough pass attempts for Tua, it's because he hits a couple of big ones. It's because they have a couple of 40 or 50 yard touchdowns, and I'll be okay with that. I don't think there's a chance that he's not good and there's not enough pass attempts for Tua. Um, I'm going to steal your stick, so hit the music. This is the game of the week. No, you, you, excuse me. I'm you not going to sing, but it's the game of the week. Which one? Dolphins. Lions. Lions. Li- really? Yep. Mm, all right. Well, I'll see if I can come up with a different one for tomorrow's show. I'll see if I can <laughs> find a way to check Dave. Uh, you know who I love this oh, week? Oh, he doesn't know about that. Yeah, I, I every week I, I find a way to queue up Dave to say the name of the game, and then I play the music, and, he's, and he's like, ah, oh, you little rascal. Um, I'll tell you who I love. I think he gets annoyed with you. <laughs> oh, he likes it. I love the Philadelphia Phillies. Let's go Phillies. All right, players to avoid. Who he? You want to start, Heath? You okay with that? You're a Phillies fan now? Or do you just jinx the Phillies because you want the Astros to win? Oh, no, I want the Astros to lose. <laughs> Let's go Phillies. Okay. Uh, um, the rest I'm, I'm trying to avoid my, my one true love, David Montgomery. Um, just... I do not like this spot for the Bears offense at all. I I think there's a chance that this offense can be good enough that both Montgomery and Khalil Herbert can be borderline number two running backs, but I do think it's going to be close to a 50-50 split moving forward, and this is not the type of game that you want a running back in a 50-50 split. The, the Cowboys have just been absolute, and I know the Patriots hadn't given up any touchdowns to running backs coming into last week, but the Cowboys have been better in terms of yards allowed than the Patriots as well, and they've only given up two touchdowns all year to the position. So I'd like to stay away from both David Montgomery and Khalil Herbert. I actually have the Jets running backs and the Panthers running backs ahead of the Bears running backs. James Robinson included in that? James Robinson included in that. Oh. Wow, you know, Heath said his one true love. I started scanning like with DJ Moore, Brandon Cooks. Oh, David Montgomery. Okay, uh, Jamie, who are you avoiding? I'll stick with your uh, Philadelphia theme, and I would like to avoid the Steelers. Um, that's going to be a tough matchup for them, especially if Robert Quinn plays. Uh, so Najee Harris, Deontay Johnson, George Pickens. The one that I would start is Pat Fryermuth, just because of his position and the opportunity that he tends to get. Um, but yeah, Najee and, and Deontay Johnson, I would sit them if you can. I'd play Montgomery over Najee Harris. I can't him. believe you mushed the Phillies. <laughs> uh, Have you I ever also... adopted a team and cheered for them and things not gone terribly wrong for that team? Probably not. <laughs> 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 I'd have to think about that. What about pick? Would you just at this point just start Pickens over Deontay Johnson? Um, in PPR, I would still start Johnson, but I have them back to back. In non PPR and half PPR, I'd go with Pickens. Okay. You know, it's kind of interesting about that game. It's one of the last ones we're going to preview, I think. But the Eagles, they, they see a lot of slot receiver targets. First of all, I think they see the most wide receiver targets in football per game. But a lot of it goes to the slot, understandably. right? Try not to throw it. They're two corner, they're outside corners. And people may not know this because he's, you know, like seven foot five. But Chase Claypool is a slot receiver this year. He plays mm-hmm. like, I, I don't know, two thir- three fourths of his snaps from the slot. So I can't sit here and say to start Chase Claypool, but from a matchup standpoint, he might have the best one in that group. Uh, it is a great time of year. First of all, you got the World Series coming up on Friday. You've got your bets for, for college football, for the NFL. You got your fantasy teams. You got all this stuff. You got you need the CBS Sports app. All right. You need the CBS Sports app with lightning fast live scoring. We also have a fantasy app, by the way, to keep things separate. But 
CBS Sports app's got your, your best live scoring for every pro and college football game, all major sports, of course. You can track your favorite teams, just individual games that you have an interest in, and you can get breaking news alerts. You can watch live sports. You can stay on top of all the latest updates. It is totally free whether you have an iPhone or Android, and it is the easiest way to keep your finger on the pulse of every game that matters. Download the CBS Sports app. Let's go through the news and notes. <sighs> okay. Catch my breath. We have a lot of news and notes. Quarterback news. Oh, is it Wednesday practice report time? We need music for this. Yeah, Wednesday practice. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Ryan Tannehill is improving, but he did not practice, so we don't know if he's going to play at Houston this week. Give me a running back game. <clears throat> Aaron Rodgers missed practice. He's got the thumb injury there at Buffalo on Sunday night. Baker Mayfield will likely be available, but PJ Walker is going to start. Somehow Heath got PJ Walker for zero dollars in our two QB or in our super flex league. That so not just me. averaging out, I've only spent a hundred dollars on Jimmy Garoppolo and PJ Walker combined. <laughs> Perfect. If the Andy Dalton's gonna start for the Saints. Jameis Winston is healthy, although there was a report that he's not a hundred percent healthy. But this is the best matchup in fantasy so far, and it's a game we'll talk about later. Andy Dalton against the Raiders, who give up the most points to quarterbacks. And Mac Jones is going to start for the Patriots. At running back, Zeke likely out. DeAndre Swift practiced in full. Have you guys ranked DeAndre Swift yet? No, we have not. Would you gamble on Swift over Gus Edwards if you had to make that decision? The fact that he practiced in full, yes. Especially if he practices in full today. There's been some weird things this year where guys have practiced in full on Wednesday because it wasn't like a real practice, and then on Thursday they don't practice in full. But if he's full today, 100%. Okay, James Conner practiced. Daryl Henderson missed practice with an illness. Cam Akers and Kyron Williams are not expected to play this week. Chuba Hubbard did not practice. Carolina's still going to go RBBC, running back by committee. So will the Bears. Robert Sala said James Robinson would be a good compliment to Michael Carter and Ty Johnson, and that the Jets would take it slow with James Robinson as they get the Patriots this week. Wide receiver news. We should be concerned about Debo, right? I mean, we can't just assume Debo's going to play. He missed practice with a hamstring. You should absolutely be concerned about Debo. I think you're looking at uh, probably another uh, DMP or limited on Thursday. It's probably going to come down to uh, the old game time decision um, for him. And, you know, hopefully we don't take it to Sunday and we have to wait until, you know, four o'clock game to find out that answer. But I would say at this point, you know, the only decisions you're making is if you have Debo versus the Bucks receivers. I would wait out Debo over the Ravens receivers for sure and find another alternative. But if you have to make a choice, you know, the 10-team league between Debo, Godwin, Evans, you're sitting Debo for those guys. Yeah, and I, I would, even if you told me Debo was playing, I would play those guys over him. Monroe St. Brown is likely you know, to funny. play. Either Dave's watching the show or he just uh, saw the news because he just texted me and Heath, uh, DeAndre Swift, in our rankings. <laughs> uh, Madre Swift seems likely to play. Uh, uh, Monroe St. <laughs> Swift. <laughs> St. Brown yeah. seems likely to play. Jameson Williams won't be back for at least a month. If you can trade him for Garrett Wilson, you should do it. Corey Davis missed practice. Jets are hopeful that... Um, Elijah Moore will be able to play this week. Julio Jones was limited. Jets are hopeful that Elijah Moore will be able to play? Yeah. Okay. Not a guarantee. Um, okay. But, yeah. He's not hurt, right? No, but he's not a guarantee from what I understand. All right, I guess we expect him to play. He's I don't know. I just I know I hadn't heard that, and I was trying to think of, like, what is the, the questionable part? Like, they're not sure if he's going to be on the team. No, he's on the team. <laughs> okay, but Robert Sala said he's not he sure if he wants to be traded. So, all right, Jarvis Landry and Michael Thomas mispractice. Nico Collins mispractice. He's day to day. I didn't like what they said that he he's not out for the year. Why would you have to say that if he's really just day to day? Nico Collins, Alan Lazard mispractice. Noah Brown mispractice. Van Jefferson. Maybe they're trying to trade him, and they don't want people to think he's hurt. Maybe like uh, James Robinson. I don't know. Uh, Van Jefferson practiced, so he might play this week. Kadarius, Tony, and Kenny, Kenny Galladay did not practice. Stop me if you heard that one before. They haven't ruled out DK Metcalf yet, but he didn't practice. Mike Williams is expected to miss at least four weeks. Jamie, should we pick up Josh Palmer? They've got the Falcons coming out of the bye. I mean, we talked about that on Tuesday, that if you have the ability to stash uh, a player like that, then it's worth the gamble. He's not Mike Williams. He's not going to play the same as Mike Williams. He might not even run the same routes as Mike Williams, but... There's target opportunities to attach yourself, as your famous phrase, attach yourself to a good quarterback, and you'd be attaching yourself to Justin Herbert. So that's not a bad idea. 
Okay. And Jahan Dotson mispracticed. Tight ends, Mark Andrews questionable. Dalton Schultz mispracticed. It's probably not a surprise. He's been dealing with that knee injury. Logan Thomas was limited. He might get back out, hopefully back out there this week. Darren Waller was limited. Hopefully he gets back out there. TJ Hawkinson mispracticed with a knee injury. I knew he was injured, Jamie. TJ yeah. Hawkinson. <laughs> it was this mystery. I kept saying he was hurt. Nobody could find anything about it. Apparently, he's got some knee issue, TJ Hawkinson. But he came right back in. He played his normal snap share in week seven. On the offensive line, other than the stuff for tonight, Elton Jenkins for the Packers. He's been playing tackle and guard, I think, this year. He missed practice. And defensively, Marshawn Lattimore was out. Calais Campbell's not playing tonight. A.J. Terrell was out. He missed practice. Uh, Miami safety Brandon Jones is out for the season. If you think about secondaries that are really beat up right now, the ones that come to mind are the Dolphins, the Saints, the Falcons, and the Bucks, and maybe the Panthers as well. So keep those in mind. Pittsburgh getting a little bit healthier as Akilah Witherspoon returned to practice, and I think I can stop. Oh, TJ Watt. TJ Watt probably going to be back in three weeks after the bye. They got Philadelphia this week, then the bye, and then New Orleans probably after the bye, but he is eligible to return this week, TJ Watt. 49ers could get Jason Verrett back this week. That would be nice. And Jacksonville lost a starting cornerback. Shaq Griffin's on IR. They get the Broncos this week. And now I'm done with the news and notes. One question for each game. Let's start with Green Bay at Buffalo. Start or sit, Gabe Davis? Must start. Okay. Then start or sit, Devin Singletary? Maybe start. He's a a low-end number two wide receiver. I'd start him over Najee and the Panthers and the Jets and the Bears. Singletary, you were talking about. Yeah, okay. and the Broncos and the Commanders. Ten at Indianapolis. Do you like any wide receivers in this game as the Colts give up the fewest fantasy points wide receivers? Usually it's the number two guys who are just awful. The number one guys are okay. But do you like any wide receivers on the Colts or Commanders? Uh, I would start both McLaurin and Samuel in three receiver leagues. I would not start them in two receiver leagues. And I would start Pittman in a three receiver league and try to avoid the other two if you can. Pittman and McLaurin are both, I got McLaurin over Pittman, but both are borderline number two, high and number three receivers. You like Gabe Davis better? Yeah. Yes. All right, Denver at Jacksonville, this game in London, early start. Starter sit, Christian Kirk. He's in the same scenario as the other guys we just talked about. I, I have it ranked McLaurin, Kirk, Pittman. Me too. Uh, there's a PPR number that I like to use for wide receivers. It's 14 PPR fantasy points. Last year, there were about 27 or 28 wide receivers who averaged that. This year, I think there's right about 26 now, averaging 14 PPR fantasy points per game. So... I like to use that as a borderline number two wide receiver, 14 PPR fantasy points. You might hear me reference that sometimes. Only three wide receivers have done that against Denver so far through seven games. New England at the Jets. Rank the running backs. Stevenson, Carter, Harris, Robinson. Yeah. Pittsburgh at Philadelphia. Would you start Najee Harris or Devontae Smith? Devontae. Devontae. All right. Harris, by the way, in non-PPR, I believe he is not a top 30 running back per game. In full PPR, he's something like 26 per game, Najee Harris. That's that's not the rankings. That's what he's been for the season, just, just to clarify. Cincinnati at Cleveland. Amari Cooper is at home. Would you start him or Tyler Boyd? Cooper. They are back-to-back for me. Ooh. Cooper over Boyd. Cooper or McLaurin, Pittman, Kirk. Cooper. McLaurin. Okay. Tennessee at Houston. Anyone to start in this game other than the running backs? And I have been told, Heath, by uh, by Dave, I've been told that this is a Joe Boo week for Brandon Cooks. I like Brandon Cooks this week with Nico out. Yeah, he's um, right there. I, I've got it. Cooper, Cooks, Boyd. So right there in that, no, that range. But they're behind McLaurin for you? Yes. A lot of wide receivers that are going to be in the flex discussion and start sit discussion in this show, huh? Most of, of the wide receivers are flexes. There's like 
14 that are top 24 wide receivers. <laughs> I get you. <clears throat> All right, let's go. Uh, let's go to um, <clears throat> Green Bay. Let's go to clear my throat. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Green Bay at Buffalo. So this is an 11 and a half point spread. Buffalo is a big favorite here. As of now, I assume not expecting Alan Lazard. It's just going to be tough for Green Bay. Uh, and let's talk about Aaron Jones and tough matchups. Last year, he faced the six teams that allowed the fewest yards per carry to running backs, each of the top six. In those six games, Aaron Jones averaged 3.6 yards per carry. But what was weird is he only had 15 catches for 120 yards and a touchdown in those six games. And half of that production was against Seattle, who gave up the most receiving yards. So anyway, and he was not good in tough matchups last year. So how do you feel, Heath, about Aaron Jones coming off a great game, but against the Bills, who are just incredible up front and so good against running backs? I am starting Aaron Jones. I am hopeful for another six plus targets you may not get 10 targets again but if alan lazard's not there you might get 10 targets again okay but damian pierce uh ken walker travis start all those guys over him in non-ppr i'm still starting jones over most of those guys in full ppr all right so he's i have a tough one to make in one league in non-ppr of gus edwards and aaron jones and i'm leaning edwards wow okay why everything you just said <laughs> i mean it's <laughs> if he does not score and you don't get rewarded for those catches good luck with aaron jones yeah who gets more total yards you think aaron jones or gus edwards um based on how aaron jones has played the majority of the season i'm gonna guess it's gonna be close i would give them a slight nod to aaron jones but this team is, is gonna struggle yes they are i wonder if the lazard injury Assuming he's out, helps Jones. You think helps him more catches? Well, I mean, it's also, you know, get ready to be swarmed by, you know, 11 guys. Yeah. And he had, what, 10 catches last week? He had nine catches last week. So, But, I mean, more than usual. He usually has three. All right, anyway, Aaron Jones is a guy you're, you're going to mostly start, but lower your expectations. Lowered expectations. Anyone else on the Packers? New. <laughs> no no Tunyon like no he's way in that borderline top 12 range he's borderline not usable well I think the Lazard thing just makes things interesting I mean does anyone step up does anyone see a big time increase in targets and can they do anything with it no I mean he's he does I just I think he's probably going to throw the ball a bunch to Jones and Tunyon but if Lazard's not there because he doesn't like anybody else Start Josh Allen. Let's talk about Devin Singletary here. Devin Singletary. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Devin Singletary or Michael Carter? Singletary. Singletary. You guys have talked about how he's not good in blowouts. So what's what's your level of concern in that regard for Devin Singletary? Um, I will feel better about Devin Singletary, and this may play into the health of uh, how uh, Dawson Knox has been if Zach Moss is inactive. If Zach Moss is inactive again, which we're not going to know until Sunday night, um, that would probably be more carries for Singletary because this is going to be a blowout most likely if things hold the form. And then are they going to just give James Cook those chances late in the game or are they going to give Singletary a few of those? So um, and that's really more for the ceiling for Singletary, but I still think you just look at what his – opportunity and potential is you know he's been involved in the passing game they should be able to do whatever they want to so i think singletary is a low-end number two running back depending on the format okay uh all right i'll talk i'll give more singletary things later start stefan diggs gabe davis is in your top 18 and non-ppr uh, top 23 in full ppr he still doesn't have more than six targets in any game uh, do you care about the stat? I, I really often look at the, you know, the big plays allowed. And do you care about that with, with Gabe Davis? Because this is not one of the better matchups on his schedule. The Packers have been pretty good avoiding the big play. Seventh fewest completions of 20 plus yards. Eighth fewest completions of 20 plus air yards. And they have faced two teams that throw downfield a lot. And they 
allowed, and those, I mean, those were the Bears and the Patriots. They throw downfield a lot. They didn't allow any big plays mm-hmm. to the Bears. They allowed two to the Patriots, which is not good. Two in a week is not good. But does that matter to you for Gabe Davis? I do look at it a lot. I don't know how much it should matter. Or you know, what do you think? I was really going to say that I think it does until you told me that the two teams that the Packers have faced that are big play teams are the Bears and the Patriots, and then I started questioning everything that I've ever known in life. Big play um, teams. That, I shouldn't say they're big play teams. They are teams that throw the ball downfield. But the Patriots actually are a, a pretty damn good big play team. They shouldn't be taken lightly. They're actually pretty underrated in that. And they they connected twice on completions of 20-plus air yards. And if you see two a week, two a week is a lot. You're never, you're rarely going to see more than three a week. Uh, so just putting that in perspective. Unless That's you're this team. <laughs> what do you mean? The Bills. Oh, I mean a defense giving them up. But yes, and the, again, unless they're, unless playing, they're the playing the Bills. Could be. <laughs> I, I, I will say this just because I think they're tied together. If the Packers are going to take away the big play, then Devin Singletary should have an opportunity to have a big game because that's kind of what we saw in the first half, first three quarters of the Chiefs game was, you know, they were just daring the Chiefs, daring the Bills to run and it was working. And then they got a little blitz happy and Josh Allen turned into Josh Allen. So that's the, you know, the, the chess match of how this, you know, teams typically will try and play the Bills. Okay, we're going to dare you to run. Oh, hey, we got that blitz package that we haven't used yet. Let's dial that one up. And then he kills you over the top. So I think if you're, if you're trusting Devin Singletary to have a good game, you probably should be banking on Gabe Davis to have a mediocre one. Um, and by mediocre, it's probably a 30-yard touchdown as opposed to two 40-plus-yard touchdowns. Um, I'm starting Davis because I don't want to have that guy on my bench. Okay. And yeah, all right. I'm I'm gonna I'm not gonna belabor the point. So they haven't really stopped any good wide receivers this year, except for Adam Thielen. They just haven't faced a lot of good wide receivers. The Packers. Um, yeah, but when you say stopped Adam Thielen, it's because Justin Jefferson went completely nuts. Yeah, 184 yards and two touchdowns. Um, all right, Dawson Knox is uh, not a guy to start. I can avoid him. And the Bills DST is top five. And Indochino suits are top one. The best suit I own. Not a joke. Love my Indochino suit. Wear it every chance I get. Uh, I think after this year, after this football season's over, I'm probably going to get another one because I've I've tried other suits, you know, like, for example, go to a wedding and you have to buy a suit from a chain, you know, like a big chain and you're part of the wedding party, something like that. It never fits right. They try to fit it to you. It's terrible when you get it. You have to go to a tailor. That costs a lot of money. And it still doesn't fit anywhere near as well as my Indochino suit. And it doesn't look nearly as good. It's it's just, it's such a no-brainer here. And if you are into custom suits, or if you're not, well, if you're not into custom suits, let me tell you, some people pay $800, $900, $1,000 for custom suits. They're very expensive. Indochino, they're really not. You're talking about half that price. You can get a, a great suit for about $399 or actually $449. They start at four hundred and forty nine dollars for uh, made for you suits. Premium fitted shirts start at just eighty nine dollars. It's not just suits, so you're going to look incredible. You're going to feel great wearing it, and we can give you a discount at Indochino.com. You can design your perfect suit with Indochino. Get fifty bucks off any purchase of three ninety nine or more when you use the promo code FFT at Indochino.com. That is I N D O C H I N O dot com, and the promo code is FFT. That's 50% off any purchase of $3.99 or more. You go to the website, submit your measurements. You pick out every detail, color, fabric, pattern, buttons, pleats, monogram on the inside, design on the inside of the jacket, everything. You get to make it uniquely yours. It is a really fun experience and a great product. I strongly recommend it. Indochino.com. Promo code is FFT for $50 off any purchase of $3.99 or more. Back to the games. Washington is at Indiana. Uh, we should probably talk McKenzie. Sorry. Go ahead, Isaiah McKenzie. Uh, I don't know if you want to play him, but again, you know, you're talking still being tied to Josh Allen. So deeper leagues, three receivers might consider it. Again, thinking that the Bills are going to basically do whatever they want to. I am curious, though, to see coming off the bye week what they do with Khalil Shakir and, and McKenzie because how those two guys have played their last two games, respectively, when one was there and one wasn't. Yeah, I would like to stash Khalil Shakir if I can in a deeper league, just in case. Okay. All right, Washington at Indianapolis. So the Colts allow the fewest fantasy points to wide receivers. And, you know, you look at guys like Brandon Cooks, Christian Kirk, uh, Juju, Cortland Sutton. They've had 
78 to 89 yards, but the number two receivers are always just terrible against the Colts. I mean, you already addressed it, Heath, but just to do it again, we kind of talked more about McLaurin as a number two, number three option. What about Curtis Samuel? He's a number three, number three option. So, like, I mean, he's only like five spots behind um, Terry McLaurin, but it's I'm I'm starting McLaurin with more confidence. I think with Taylor Heineke, you can expect a little t- higher target share for McLaurin because that's what we've seen through last week and last year. Um, Samuel will be maybe even like touchdown dependent because I don't know how many carries he's going to get either. Okay. Um, by the way, I think uh, I gave some of the wrong. Ni- uh. I don't know. I might have mixed up that first stat a little bit. Might have had the wrong name in there, but it's the point stands. Number one wide receivers are okay. Number two wide receivers are usually terrible against the Colts. Uh, so we'll start with Washington. We talked oh, about they've the- only given up though four touchdowns to receivers. Christian Kirk has three of them. Right. That's okay. That's what it was because Christian Kirk has played them twice. So there was a game where he had like eighty-ish yards. There was another game where he had just twenty-four yards and a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a tough secondary. You know, that's the one thing that's kind of helped for this team. They've only allowed four receivers over 53 receiving yards on the season, and so they're doing a very good job. So it's a question of, did McLaurin last week do enough to show you that Taylor Heineke is the tonic he needs to be back as a must-start receiver? I hope so. And most people are going to start Terry McLaurin based on, you know, the injuries and the bye weeks, and, and certainly a three-receiver league, he's a must-start guy. But in two-receiver leagues, he's just outside that range for me. Um, because I do buy into the secondary. I think with Stephon Gilmore healthy, it's a different group. Um, I don't necessarily think that the the commander's offense is is you know foolproof now that that Heineke is there. So uh, I would I would give a little bit of caution with with McLaurin. All right, Devin Singletary or McLaurin? See, there I probably just play the up. If McLaurin hits, he's he's got a higher ceiling, so I would take McLaurin. But like I, I like Tyler Boyd better in PPR than Terry McLaurin. Um, I would go Singletary and non PPR, but um, I think in full PPR I've got McLaurin. No, I've got Singletary in both. All right, we're sitting Taylor Heineke. How about the Washington running backs in this game? You know, going into Week Seven, uh, Ron Rivera said he wanted it to be a little bit more of a split between Robinson and Gibson, and he got that. Robinson had twenty carries, Gibson had ten. Uh, Gibson had some work, you know, near the goal line. He had a receiving touchdown. Heath, how do you feel about the Washington running backs against the Colts, who are 21st against running backs? They don't have a bad run defense, but they haven't been very good. Yeah, I think that uh, Gibson and Robinson are both flexes. Um, they are behind. I'm, I'm probably the low guy on them, but uh, if either one of them scores a touchdown, they're going to be a, a borderline number two running back. And if they don't, they're probably going to score somewhere between seven and ten points. I think it's easy to start Robinson at this point in non PPR because you know you're talking about a running back getting 17 plus carries back to back weeks, scored in one of them over 80 total yards in the other. You know, so it's it's worth it to trust him there. I, I like what they've been doing with Gibson. I think it's the the perfect scenario. You know, again, play him over J.D. McKissick. I think he's got more upside than McKissick does. And so if this is going to continue, and you're talking four straight games, I think it is with three catches for him, um, 10 plus carries. You know, so he's getting maybe you know 15 total touches on a good week. That's perfect. And so he in, in PPR, I would start Gibson over Robinson. Okay. And, you know, for Robinson, you got to think they got a pretty good chance to win this game. And that's what they've done each of the last two weeks. They beat the Bears. They beat the Packers. So, obviously, more run opportunities for him. He, he's not going to catch the ball, really. But um, So, that's obviously a good thing for Robinson. Robinson or Gus Edwards? I have to make that decision. I'm going to take that up to game time, I think. Gus. What's the, uh, the office meme where Pam says it's the same picture? I actually don't know that. <laughs> um, I, I, I would, um, I would lean ever so slightly to Gus. Okay. Uh, talked about the Washington wide receivers. Would you start? Uh, would you start Brian Robinson over Curtis Samuel? And non PPR for sure. Uh, yeah, I'd start him in both. And okay. I think it's worth noting that even with Ellinger starting, the Colts are still three point favorites in this game. Yeah, I think they could win, though. I mean, Washington could certainly yeah, win. Yeah, they could. Just being a, being a competitor. It, it, is, it is funny that as bad as the Colts seem to be, they are 3-3-1. Three, three, and one. Yeah. By the way, I, you know what I like this way? I like the Patriots upset the Jets. What do you think? Going on a limb there based on history? <laughs> They're two-and-a-half-point underdogs. Just got waxed by the Bears. 
they're gonna win. I mean, historically, they just own the Jets, so yes, they do. Last year, uh, they beat them pretty handily, I think. In I think the Patriots are favored. No, I think the Jets are favored. It's in New York, right? It's in New Jersey. It is. Uh, Um, Every book that I'm looking at on uh, Caesars definitely has two and a half point favorites for the Patriots. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I saw that wrong then. I'm sorry about that. I thought it was the Jets who were two and a half point favorites. Okay, then I like the Jets. Uh, I like the (laughs) Jets. Uh, yeah, Jets are plus two and a half. My bad. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, if Logan Thomas plays, are you interested? They're not a very, the Colts are not good against tight ends. No, no. All right. So how about the Colts? Jonathan Taylor, is he still a must start? Yes. It, like he is definitely a top, almost top 12 running back, but I don't, it's hard to call him a must start when I would start. Tony Pollard and Travis Etienne and Damian Pierce and Ken Walker all over him. Yeah. What about Aaron Jones? Um, PPR versus non. Yeah, I mean, Taylor did catch seven catches. It's it's an unknown, but Taylor did just have seven catches last week. Uh, Yeah, I have no idea what this offense is going to look like. I mean, I think it was such a good PPR offense with Ryan. I don't know what it's going to be. With Ellinger in his first career start. Um, Is it uh, Ellinger or Ellinger? Elling, Ellinger. Sure. And I don't think you answered that. Sure, <laughs> Ellinger. Okay. What did you ask? You said Jer Gur, right? Yeah, but you just said Gur. <laughs> you just Ger. growled at me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, uh, Michael Pittman, where do you have him ranked, Heath? Uh, 25-ish. Yeah, he's he's right in that same McLaurin conversation of guys. You don't you certainly don't want to call them a must start wide receiver, and it will be interesting. Like we're going to learn a lot um, as far as like the pecking order in terms of targets and how many times they're actually going to throw the ball. I wouldn't be that surprised if the Colts just go back to a more like super run heavy approach like they'd been the last two years. Yeah, I was reading some stuff. Uh, I forget where, so I apologize. Just with the Colts receivers and like Michael Pittman was talking about giving him more, you know, like jump ball opportunities, um, some more plays down the field. Uh, Paris Campbell was talking about, you know, more plays down the field. You know, they weren't criticizing Matt Ryan by any stretch, but it was just more about the offense in general. And I think it's um, going to be telling to see how these guys play because it's a great match. Like if this was Matt Ryan was playing well, no concerns, or, you know, you've seen Sam Ellen Gurr (laughs) um, doing some things already and you had some faith, like, I would be all in on Michael Pittman because we've seen teams just throw on this team and have a lot of success doing it. So I'm hopeful that it's, oh, why did I bench Michael Pittman if you'd make that choice? You know, so like, again, similar to McLaurin, and I agree with Heath, they're very similarly similarly ranked. Um, That if it's a three-receiver league, you are definitely starting him. If it is a two-receiver league, make sure you just have better options to play this week. Like I have one league where I'm, I'm going back to DJ Moore over Michael, or I'm starting DJ Moore for the first time over Michael Pittman because I like his setup this week a little bit better. Cooks or Pittman? Pittman. Um, Pittman, but they're almost back to back. And which DST do you like better? Oh, by the way, you were sitting Paris Campbell and Alec Pierce. Just wait and see what happens there. Yes. I think that's the best bet. Uh, which DST do you like better? Okay. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about Denver and Jacksonville. We'll be right back on fantasy football today. Denver at Jacksonville. Okay. No Baron Browning for the Broncos. Very important linebacker for them. Both teams have lost four straight. Which quarterback do you like? Oh, by the way, this game's at 930 Eastern. And these are my two quarterbacks in our super flex league. So I will have a pretty good idea of what, of, uh, what kind of day it will be for me <laughs> by about 12.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Russell Wilson or Trevor Lawrence, who do you like? Russ. I'm with Russ. But we don't really like either one, right? I don't no. want to start either one. Not okay. top 12 guys for sure. Do you want to start any Broncos? Uh, Sutton is very much in that same range of Terry McLaurin, Michael Pittman, Brandon Cooks. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's you know, interesting. Hopefully it's, it's the same connection that we saw. And look Dulcich. His, I want to start Dulcich. Look at the first five games. I, I want to tell you what the pace was for Cortland Sutton in the first five games of the season. 
99 catches, 1,418 yards, three ca- three touchdowns, which is low, on 156 targets. Uh, he was getting peppered with targets, and he was 11.2 or more PPR fantasy points every game. He had a terrible game with Russell Wilson in week six. He had a terrible game without Russell Wilson in week seven. Um, but should the first five games hold more weight? You know, like because five out of six games with Russell Wilson, he's been a guy you're not even considering sitting. I'm happier that Russell Wilson is starting as a Cortland Sutton manager than I was with Brett Rippon. So, you know, there, there's that positive. I, I think we've seen um, at times more so with Shaq Griffin on the field as opposed to him probably off of it because he struggled a little bit this season. The number one receivers have had some decent games against this defense. So we'll see how that matters. But I think in terms of Sutton right now, you you got to be happy that Russ is back because that's the guy who he's just locked in on time and time again. Okay. By the way, uh, just thinking of this right now. Um, so Heath's, Heath's receiver was DJ Moore. My guy was Michael Pittman. Your guy was Cortland Sutton. Who was Dave's guy in that range? I honestly don't know. What would you say? I mean, I know at, at one point he was a little excited about Allen Robinson, but I don't want I'm to put pretty it sure down. it was a running back. No, it was Michael <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> Michael, Michael Thomas. That's a great one. So we've, we've all had a guy who's had some moments and some failures and um, Heath seemed to be trending up. Mine seemed to be trending down. Um, Adams is kind of teetering a little bit. Um, Dave Shout guy is, huh? He is killing me the last couple of weeks. Corlin's son, just yeah. killing me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so our, our non obvious top tier receiver that we all liked. Michael Thomas is a good call. Yeah. Yeah. That's a shame. Um, should have just drafted T Higgins. All right. The running backs in this game, Travis Etienne is by far the best. The Broncos guys, you'd start. I, you, would you start Brian Robinson over the Broncos guys? Easily. Might be wrong, but that's what I would do. Um, I would in non PPR for sure. In full PPR, I'd probably start Melvin. But how many catches are you expecting? Because Robinson at least had two last week. Like, I don't expect them to be like 10 catch guys. <laughs> You know, it's probably three or four catches at best. Yeah, probably three or four catches at best. But I think there's also a chance that Melvin Gordon, like, I don't think it's a huge difference in non-PPR. I, but I, I, I feel pretty comfortable that unless the Colts offense just looks dramatically different, Robinson is getting 15-plus carries. I can't tell you with any confidence, I don't know if you can, that one Broncos guy is getting that. No. No. Um, Jerry Judy, number three guy. Yes, but behind all the guys we've talked about. He right. he would prefer Brett Rippon. Like when he saw Russell Wilson doing high knees down the aisle on the plane, he probably wanted to just throw a parachute on him and kick him off the off the plane. Greg Dulcich or like, can you imagine that like you're sleeping on the plane? It's the middle of the night, you're flying to London, you're probably uncomfortable. You know, you're you're an NFL player, you're obviously a larger size human being than the rest of us. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> you look up, you know, like they probably have eye masks, you know, they flip up the eye mask. And then there's that goofball doing high knees down the aisle. I'm going to assume it was slow high knees, like getting stretches for his hamstrings. I don't think he was running and bouncing on the plane. I like the, um, the NFL memes account showing, uh, you know, when he did the, um, when he went through his whole pregame routine the, two years ago, Russell Wilson, you know, like where he was faking the handoffs and on oh, pre- yeah, when he had yeah, a finger yeah. injury. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> it said this is him on the plane doing all that. <laughs> And then he's going to be eating a sub, too. Uh, no, they canceled it. They did? I think so. I think somebody said that, that they canceled this up. Yeah, um, there's that. a fantastic um, athletic article, I believe, about Russ and his um, trying to save minutes of his time and the, and the creative ways he does that. And I won't say what one of them is, but you should go, you should go read about it. Oh, gosh. Okay. What is it? Like, <laughs> brush his teeth on the toilet or something oh, like that? Please tell me he wears a diaper. No, oh, jeez. Uh, you guys were both going the right direction. <laughs> it's just that he has tried to eliminate the need to do that. <laughs> well, I think I know what the problem is. <laughs> I think we know how to fix Russell Wilson. All right. Let's, all right. God, I'm sorry. We got to go faster here. Greg Dulcich or Dalton Schultz? There's more upside with Dulcich right now. I, I do think the one thing to keep an eye on with Schultz, clearly health. Um, how much does the potential offense change if they, you know, maybe throw the ball a little bit more this week? 
I mean, I can't believe that you have Greg Dulcich ranked out of Dalton Schultz. Both of you, I, it is kind of eye popping to me. I, I am a little concerned if the Cowboys, especially playing the Bears, when they might not have to pass. Now I bumped up their pass attempts a little bit with Zeke being out, but if they want to throw the ball thirty-two times a game, that's just five or six targets for Dalton Schultz, who's not himself right now. Now I think it's probably six targets for Greg Dulcich too. But I don't. Schultz is not one hundred percent yet. Well, so, Russell Wilson's not throwing a lot more than that on average. You know, like you can look at the targets last week for Dulcich, but they threw a lot more with Rippon than they did with Wilson. And he had three targets two weeks ago with Russell Wilson. He just caught a long first that. game. I mean, I guess it just—I don't know. It surprised me. I think the thing to Heath laid it out, you know, as 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 perfectly as you can. The, the the thing with Dolchitz, though, just the other side of it is it's not an easy matchup. Jaguars have played really well against tight ends. Their safeties are playing well. Um, I don't think he's going to walk into you know big time production, but the health factor matters. You know, the fact that that Schultz continues to be on the injury report, continues to you know leave games, not not playing the uh, entire complement of tight end snaps. They're using other guys in the position. You know, you've seen that, and so. Um, the one, the other, well, there's one other caveat. Noah Brown did not practice on Wednesday with a foot injury. And so, you know, maybe some more concentrated targets for Schultz could matter. But, you know, at this point, I think you just play the upside card. And the upside right now feels like it's Dolchitz. Okay. Travis E. Team, go to the other side of the ball. We're not starting. The Broncos have the best defense. So, you know, don't start uh, Trevor Lawrence. Don't start Zay Jones and Marvin Jones and all that. Uh, how about Travis Etienne? Is he a must start? He was a little bit lower in the rankings than I thought. Uh, he is. But, well, oh, did you make an update? Because I thought you had him 17th in PPR. Now you have him 8th. I don't think I had him 17th, but okay. um, he's had, uh, Dave has him 15th in PPR. Jamie has him 13th. Okay, you're starting him. Um, start Travis Etienne. And Christian Kirk is, you know, what, what do you think? Like, is he going to get to 12 PPR fantasy points? Uh, I, I think that's that's a safe range. You know, the nice thing that you saw last week in a tough matchup again, he was uh, a few inches away from scoring a touchdown, having a monster game against the Giants. Um, they threw, correct me if I'm wrong, nine targets to all three of their receivers uh, last week. I and think Kirk Jones, had 10 last week. And, and Kirk? Ten, Kirk had 10. I think they all had 10. Or 10 or 11. So 10 or more. It was right there, right? 9, 10, 11, whatever it was. So, you know, it, it's it, it's it's not about one guy is necessarily dominating targets over the other, that they're all being heavily involved, which is a great thing um, for Kirk, that he's not, you know, getting left out because the other guys are getting some more attention. But this is just a very tough secondary. And he's not going to see Sertan if he stays in the slot, which is good. But, you know, you're still talking about quality pass rush across the board. Might be Bradley Chubb's, Chubb's last game with the Broncos, so that could be a good or a bad, uh, positive or negative. Uh, situation um, because there's talk if they lose that he can get traded. So I think Kirk is, you know, somebody that, again, if he's been like, I have him in a couple of leagues where he's my best receiver. I'm not benching him um, in, in a few leagues where, you know, getting guys back off of bye week or injuries and I have, you know, other players in the two receiver league and, and good running backs for flexes. I'm going to bench him. Okay. Here are some players. Remember I said 14 PPR fantasy points is a borderline number two wide receiver. Here are some players who did not reach that against the Broncos. Metcalf, Lockett, Cooks, Debo, Pittman, Mike Williams, all of them scored fewer than 14 PPR fantasy points. Well, uh, Evan, like, yeah, go ahead. I'm skeptical that we'll have um, healthy guys each week, 24 of them that score 14. There have been 25 that have this year, but I think only 20 of them are playing this week. Um, okay. So, I, yeah, it'd be close. Uh, Evan Ingram is actually Heath. You like him and Jamie, you, yeah, he's not bad. He's 13th for Jamie. He's ninth for, for Heath. I guess you like Dulcich better than Evan Ingram. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Broncos have been pretty lethal against tight ends too, but it, Ingram, Ingram's been fairly reliable. Three straight games with nine or more PPR fantasy points, which DST do you like better in this game? Denver. Denver. All right, the Patriots are at the Jets. Yeah, I like the Patriots in this game. I think they should be favored. Oh, they are. Patriots at Jets. Stat of the game. Michael Carter, <laughs> in three of four games last year with 14 or more touches, he scored 14.4 or more PPR fantasy points. So he came through 75% of the time last year. And he's had two games this year with 14 or more touches. He scored 17 fantasy points and 9.4 fantasy points in PPR. So he's been good when he's gotten the work. Um, 
how much, Jamie, do you like Michael Carter this week? He is a good flex play. So I would start him in PPR over Brian Robinson. Um, I would start him over James Robinson for sure. I would – I'm torn. I start him over Najee Harris in PPR. I'm torn on David Montgomery um, in PPR. But I think it's uh, – you know, I don't want to look at the Patriots run defense from a week and go and say they're not good anymore because I, I think they are. You know, we, we kind of have just said, oh, my God, they lost Brees Hall. They lost Elijah Vera Tucker too, and that's going to be a big thing to overcome for them. So offensive line not as stout, uh, facing a tough run defense, facing a defense that just got embarrassed on national TV. So it, it and and a potential split, you know, so it could be a, a tough game for Michael Carter. So not a slam dunk, more of a flex, uh, but the better of the two Jets running backs. Yeah. Now Robert Salas said they're going to bring James Robinson along slowly, but he also mentioned Ty Johnson. And a lot of times coaches do that. You know, they did that with Carolina. They mentioned the third string guy didn't get any work. But I do wonder if Ty Johnson's going to be a factor. That has to at least be on your mind a little bit when you're thinking about the catches for Carter, right, Heath? It's it would be a major negative if Ty Johnson's playing a significant role on passing downs. Um, I I would not like he might he might take a t- catch or two away from Michael Carter, and Carter's certainly not a must start running back. But I yeah. think amongst the guys who are in that um, tandem on a bad team tier, which there's two dozen of them now, he's at the top. Did you guys say Carter versus Gus Edwards? It's easily Gus for me. I Even go full, P- full PPR, Jamie, you still go with Gus? Yep. Okay. And Heath would go Carter. Unless Carter. Zach Wilson changes his game, start throwing to the running backs more. Yeah. Carter or Christian Kirk? Kirk. Kirk. By the way, Heath, running backs in the four starts for Zach Wilson, running backs have an 18.6% target share. Is that, how does that rank? That is two percent higher than what he was last year. He was seven percent last, seventeen percent last year. Um, but it's still not particularly good. I think the lowest last year was twelve percent, and the highest was thirty-three percent. So it's in the bottom half, but not far from average. Yeah, he just hasn't been throwing the ball a lot. Uh, do you like any? And we like Ramondre Stevenson in this game. You like him better than Michael Carter? You like Etn better than Stevenson? Uh, I would go Stevenson over ETN in non PPR. Okay. How about Mostert or Stevenson? Mostert for me. Uh, they are basically back to back, but I would play Stevenson. Okay. Damian Harris. I'm sorry. I would play Mostert in non PPR, Stevenson in PPR. Uh, Damian Harris or David Montgomery? Montgomery. Montgomery. Damian Harris or Gus Edwards? Gus. Who? Damian, just say Gus. Uh, Damian Harris or Najee Harris? Najee. Najee. Okay, are you starting any wide receivers in this game? Uh, Myers is a number three receiver, better in PPR than none. Wilson is a desperation number three receiver. Yeah. Let me give you a Mac Jones, Jacoby Myers stat. Can we please, Azer, stat it and remove the Buffalo game from last year where Mac Jones threw three passes? If you'll allow that. Uh, if we remove that game, then Jacoby Myers has scored double-digit PPR fantasy points in seven of his last eight games with Mac Jones. Is that counting last week? No, that is not counting last week. So but he did, score, he did score double-digit fantasy points last week, but it, no, I did not count that. Um, okay, and that's it. And that's it. Um, no Garrett Wilson, no Elijah Moore, no tight ends. Be interesting to see the game plan here because they've won four in a row. They've barely thrown. This is the Jets I'm talking about. They're underdogs, as everybody knows and has known for the entirety of the show. Will they have to throw more, and who will that benefit? We'll have to keep an eye out for it. Um, both DSTs, I assume, are in play here. And who would you? which one do you prefer, Jets or, pa- or Patriots? Patriots. Okay. Las Vegas at New Orleans. Here's a stat of the game for... Normal leagues. This could be the game of the week, too. Yeah, it's just easy there. Las Vegas allows the most fantasy points to quarterbacks. So, Jamie, would you stream Andy Dalton? Would you start him over, like, a Matthew Stafford? Um, I would start him over Matthew Stafford. I am streaming him as a Patrick Mahomes manager in one league. I'm trying to think if I'm starting him in another league. Um, I think, you know, the, the hope would be is that this game lives up to what the point spread is and what these defenses have 
you know, shown you or lack thereof for the majority of the season. So it's a uh, it's a great, great matchup. Davis Mills just had 22 fantasy points against the Raiders, you know, so there's opportunity here. Um, the only issue would be is if the uh, the Saints run game is dominating and it's just a running back game back and forth because both these backs are fantastic. But I mean, every quarterback, 20 or more fantasy points against the Raiders. So hopefully Dalton follows suit. Uh, yeah. Can I do a, a second stat of the game, Adam? You can do a third because I have a second. You can go first. Go ahead. So mine will be the second. You'll be the third. Derek <laughs> Carr has made 133 career starts. In their first 133 career games, Andy Dalton has more touchdown passes, more wins, and more playoff appearances than Derek Carr. I bet he has more interceptions, too. He does. Yeah. Same yards per attempt. Oh, you wouldn't start him over car would you no no they're just kind of the same guy yeah, they're definitely not the same guy but um i know you don't like Derek carr and i know you love andy dalton you have for a long time i am starting Derek carr as a top 12 quarterback this week and dalton is just a streamer if you need him but yeah and here's your deep league stat of the game uh for for uh, Jawan Johnson, who Jamie talked about earlier. The Raiders allow the fourth most fantasy points to tight ends. They have allowed 68 yards or a touchdown to a tight end in five of six games. That would be Gerald Everett, Zach Ertz, Jeff Swaim, Travis Kelsey, and Jordan Aikens. 68 yards or a touchdown to all five of those guys. So that's a deep league guy if you're desperate at tight end. So I told I told Heath about this last week. I was playing the um, un, number one team record-wise in one league. I was number one point score but I had two losses and I was down Cooper Cup and AJ Brown but I have Mahomes and Kelsey somebody dropped Juju I picked up Juju so I went all Chiefs worked out very well and I won the game so this week having to replace those guys now I'm playing the worst team in the league having to replace Kelsey and Mahomes and Juju uh, but I do get Cup and Brown back I said you know what let's go with the same formula so I'm picked up Andy Dalton and Jawan Johnson we'll see how the Saints stack does in that same league let's go all right, Derek Carr is a starter. You'd start, I assume, Kirk Cousins over him? Cousins over Carr? Yeah. Uh, Cousins over Carr. Yeah, Cousins has top five upside this week. Two over Carr. Yeah, I mean, the, the Saints have been so bad, basically without Marshawn Lattimore and their, I mean, their secondary. They were down to their fourth string cornerback last week. They can't tackle anyone. They are a mess defensively, but their run defense is also terrible. So Josh Jacobs could be on his way to... A fourth straight game with 30 or more PPR fantasy points. I don't think that's going to happen, but that's incredible. That he's done it three times in a row. So this he's my number one running back. Too. Wow. Yeah, I don't. I don't blame you. This this could be a shootout. This could be a terrific game uh, for fantasy. Start Devontae Adams. Any interest in Hunter Renfro or Mac Hollins? No. Hopefully Waller plays. Yeah, if he does play, the Saints have actually been great against tight ends. Second best against tight ends. Only Noah Fant is more than 23 yards. Um, what do you think? Would you start Waller if he plays? Yeah. Yes. Over Dulcich? Yep. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. So he'd be basically top five. He'd be, he'd be Waller. Uh, not top five, but over Dulcich. Okay. What's uh, Dulcich, eight? Okay. So he'd be top seven. <laughs> Top eight. eight. He'd be over Dolce's for me. All right. <laughs> Would you start Waller or Zach? I'm not Darren Waller for Dolce's, even if it works out the wrong way. <laughs> so Waller or Ertz? Ertz. Uh, yeah. All right, Andy Dalton, streamable guy. Now that we know Dalton's starting, would you start him over Daniel Jones? No, they're back to back, especially since Wandale's off the injury report. Would you stop hating on Daniel Jones? Like all week long, oh, we're trying to talk about how good Daniel Jones is going to be this week, and you're always trying to put him down. You know, I resent that because Jamie asked a trivia question about Daniel Jones yesterday, and he never gave me the answer. And I've been, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, it was 1934. That was the last time a Giants a hundred rushing yards. Uh, I didn't. Uh, we didn't. Uh, it was as a C NFL and CBS tweet. They only tweeted out the year. They didn't tweet out the name. Um, also, I need to uh, issue a, a retraction. Apparently, I was fooled by a fake tweet on the Russell Wilson story. It's the second time that's happened on the show in the last couple of years. First time this year, though. So oh, so he does go BM. I, I didn't say that he didn't, but oh, yes. Okay. Before, um, everything I referenced was not true. <laughs> okay. I, I uh, 
for Dave's sake, I'd like to see the victory lap he's going to take if P.J. Walker outscores Daniel Jones. Yes. Yeah, I don't because I'm facing P.J. Walker in the 2QB league. So, uh, Chris Olave is top 12 in both formats. Start him. Are we playing each other in the 2QB yeah. league? For, yeah. I'm not starting P.J. Walker. Okay, then fine. Go P.J. Walker all, all, all day. Uh, Olave is top 12 in both formats. And what if Michael Thomas plays? Would you start Michael Thomas? If Michael Thomas plays, I will start Michael Thomas, but I will start him behind Chris Olave. Would Michael he, Thomas be ahead of the McLaurin Pittman group? I think he'd be at the back of that group for me. He would be in the front of that group for me. Just because this game has shootout potential. Taysom Hill, start or sit? Uh start in non PPR, borderline starter in PPR. Yeah. Hill or Jawan Taysom Hill is part of my favorite stat of the week, by the way. Involving Daniel Jones. Uh, oh, what is it? That the Seahawks, when you factor in Taysom Hill's numbers, have allowed the most rushing yards and rushing touchdowns to quarterbacks by a mile. Yeah, I'm not really sure that he's a quarterback, but but okay. I mean, <laughs> he, he was playing quarterback when he ran. But he never throws position. the ball, so it's you know rarely throws the ball. He never th- he throws the ball sometimes. Throws it, yeah, he catches he, the ball sometimes. Well, I guess I guess if you want to play it that way, Adam, then we can give. Um, Saquon Barkley's numbers to Daniel Jones, right? As a quarterback running or give the team QB numbers to, to the Giants when Saquon Barkley takes snaps under center in the Wildcat. No, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't consider him a quarterback. Okay. I think that that about, well, I got to get to Taysom Hill or Dalton Schultz. Schultz. Uh, Taysom in non PPR, Schultz in PPR. Yes. Taysom Hill or Evan Ingram. Taysom in non PPR, Ingram in PPR. And Taysom Hill or Kyle Sitz? Taysom in both. Yeah. Kyle Sitz is my nickname for Kyle Pitts because you should sit Kyle Pitts. Pittsburgh at Philadelphia. Stat of the game number one 48 tight ends have an end zone target this season, and Dallas Goddard is not one of them. He does not have an end zone target. Stat of the game number two the Steelers have allowed 15 or more fantasy points in PPR to a running back in six of seven games. So Miles Sanders, he hasn't really been top of mind because they're coming off their bye. How would you feel about Miles Sanders versus, you know, all of those young studs, ETN, Walker, et cetera? Is he behind, behind them? them? Behind them, but very close. Like he's, he's uh, certainly non PPR. I take him over Aaron Jones. Um, he's in the uh, Aaron Jones, uh, most are, Damien Pierce, that range of guys. High end number two right now. And would you start Miles Sanders or Raheem Mostert? Mostert. Um, it's very close. I would go Sanders and non-PPR, Mostert and PPR. Full PPR, Miles Sanders or Tyler Boyd? Uh, I'd go with Miles Sanders. Sanders. Let's talk Najee Harris here. James Robinson or Najee Harris? Najee. Uh, Najee. Najee is closer to Carter. He's not closer to... Yeah, I just don't have it out there. Melvin Gordon or Najee Harris? Najee. Najee. Daryl Henderson, assuming he plays, or Najee Harris? Henderson. Henderson. Uh, Henderson, assuming he gets, like... I don't want him on a game-time decision. He's got an illness, so hopefully he's fine. Yeah, yeah. give him some Sudafed. Okay. <laughs> Uh, any any Pittsburgh wide receiver? Do you have any of them in your top thirty? No. Uh, right on the cusp for Deontay Johnson in PPR, but not great. I mean, Pickens is really impressive. One hundred and two yards against uh, the Jets. Uh, Eighty three yards against the Bills. He's had sixty one yards or more every time Kenny Pickett has been on the field. Yeah, except for the Tampa Bay game when Pickett left. Yeah. Pickett's best games have been the partial games. <laughs> He's had, like, good halves. Uh, okay. And like I said, Chase Claypool, 77% slot rate, and that's kind of the most vulnerable spot for the Eagles. I don't know what to tell you. Don't start They're all team. possible plays as boom-bust number three wide receivers, but none of them are top 30. Okay. Um, Pat Fryermuth is top eight for you guys. Eagles are 13th against tight ends. They've been pretty good, not not impenetrable 
against tight ends. On the other side of the ball, Star Hurts. We just talked about Miles Sanders. AJ, Brown. you know, since week one, when Devontae Smith didn't have a catch in week one, he's actually ha- has more catches. He has one more catch. Uh, no, he has uh, 10 more catches and 49 more yards than AJ Brown since week one. Um, who do you like better? Are they both starts? Tell me about the Philadelphia wide receivers, Jamie. They are both must starts. Uh, AJ Brown slightly ahead of Devontae Smith, but should be fantastic. Pittsburgh allows the second most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. So all of those guys we've talked about earlier, Pittman, McLaurin, Kirk, Sutton, blah, 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 start both uh, Philadelphia wide receivers. The Steelers also allow the most completions of 20-plus yards in the NFL. And Dallas Goddard is top five. And the Eagles DST, I spent some pretty, I put some pretty big fab bids on the on the Eagles DST in a couple of leagues and did not get them in either. They were available. Were high bids because I got them for 11 and one. Yeah, I put like eight, seven, eight bucks out of 100 original budget. Um, I really wanted them. <laughs> they they are, uh, I think, certainly in the next four or five weeks, I said it and forget it. Not even an issue. No more buy, easy schedule. Right. They've been amazing. Yep. Cincinnati's at Cleveland. Stat of the game. Cleveland allows the fewest receiving yards to slot receivers. All right. I wonder what this means to you guys. Fewest receiving yards to slot receivers, third fewest yards per catch to slot receivers, and that's on plays specifically where they're lined up in the slot. Cleveland and Dallas are the only teams, the only two teams that have allowed just one catch of 20 plus yards out of the slot, and that would be guys they face: Chase Claypool, Jacoby Myers. Uh, Myers had four for 60, Claypool had three for 35. Those are probably the best slot receivers they faced. But yeah, I wonder with that stat what that means for you with uh, with Tyler Boyd, who there's some excitement about, but Tyler Boyd's got a lot of downside. He has only two games of more than 60 yards this year. Uh, so Heath is not a great matchup on paper for Tyler Boyd. What does that mean to you? Um, like, I think it, he is going to be one of those boom-bust players that he's a number three wide receiver. He's behind that group, that McLaurin group, um, and he's ahead of the Steelers wide receivers. So not, definitely not a must-start player. I'm not even 100% sure he's must-start in a three-wide receiver league because you could definitely have three guys that you like better. But um, but yeah, I don't. I, I'm not going to be scared because of that. Like you said, it's it's a pretty specific stat. Yeah. And if the two best slot wide receivers they faced are Jacoby Myers and Chase Claypool, um, but that doesn't scare me too much. They haven't faced here's, a lot here's of what I like about Tyler Boyd, and I would start him ahead of those guys. I do think he's a must-start receiver in three-receiver leagues, and he's a borderline must-start in two-receiver leagues this week. Um, start him ahead Taylor, of those guys. I'm sorry. You said you start him ahead of those guys. Which Who are you talking about? Uh, McLaurin, Kirk, oh. Pittman. I like him better than those guys. Okay, go um, ahead. The thing that I like about this, and, you know, we always like it when we get honest answers and then actionable situations from our coaches. And Zach Taylor, you said that you brought this up numerous times about how the, they took the reins off of Joe Burrow last year and how that went for him at the end of the season. Two games ago, prior, prior to two games ago, he said, we have to get Tyler Boyd more involved. And in the last two games, it's 15 targets. And so you see the results for Joe Burrow. You see the results for this offense. It's just opened up everything that they're featuring. Their three best players, arguably, uh, no offense to Joe Mixon, but this passing game is just a monster when they're playing like this. And so Joe Burrow is as hot as any quarterback in the league right now. Might be the hottest one. Um, this is a, a a a guy who's averaging you know seven and a half targets per game, seven plus targets per game, consecutive weeks, nine targets one week, six the the other. Um, I, I just I, I think national spotlight game, Joe, Joe Burrow. Give me one of his top guys for sure. Yeah, this is a Monday nighter. Mixon, like I can't sit here and make any case against Mixon. You know he's he's. <sighs> He's just like frustrating. And, you know, he was actually trending towards 14 or fewer carries in four of his last five games, but he ended up with 17 last week. Nine of them came on the final possession, but he is not really part of the game plan right now. It's kind of weird. And I wonder if you're starting ETN and uh, all those guys, the the ETN Walker Pierce group ahead of, is there somebody I'm missing? Mostert. Would you start? You'd start Mostert and Stevenson over Joe. Well, no, I would. I mean, this is a dream matchup as you can find. You know, so it's a, uh, it's an easy, it's an easy win for Mixon if he does get you know fifteen plus touches. I, I think if, if Zach Taylor is calling a good game plan, and and that's been suspect at times. You no, know, so to praise him on one hand and to you know, uh, 
bring him down on the other. But I think, you know, we've seen sometimes that he just gets a little bit too run happy. Um, it, it hasn't been the case the last couple of games. This is the perfect team, much like the Bills should be, much like the Chiefs should be. When you have a quarterback like this in a passing game like this, you throw the score, you run to win. So how many carries did you have at the end of the game? Nine on the final drive. You only had that's what you should do with Joe Mixon. You yeah, throw early in the that's game. That's not good. You know, I can't if, rely if, on if, that. If, if the formula works, it will be perfect. And that's to be the formula for the Bengals. Now, you'd like to see that more middle of the third and the fourth as opposed to in the fourth when there might be, oh, we're up by three touchdowns and we're just going to play some Ajay P. Ryan instead. But I think you're also getting Mixon enough in the passing game. I don't know. I'm not getting away from Joe Mixon. No, I'm not getting away from Mixon. I just want to point it out. You know, he's he's been uninvolved lately. Um, he does catch. You say uninvolved. 70 carries is not uninvolved. No, oh, because because he had nine on the final drive of the game. But but that was the first – like he had one game in week six against the Saints where he had 12 touches. He has at least 15 touches in every other game. And his last three games are 28, 17, 12, and 20 in terms of touches. Like yeah. we would like for almost every running back to have his usage. Yeah, I, I, I was just comparing him to – I know, you're, break, you're breaking it down by quarter, Walker. which is which which I get no, it. No, I was, I was comparing him to Ken Walker, Travis Etienne, and Damian Pierce. And I would rather I start all those guys over Joe Mixon. Yeah, that's what kind of what I'm saying. He's still top yeah, I would start. I would start Mixon. I mean, the Browns are so bad. Trust I know, me, Zach Taylor. Just, Zach Taylor is going to look at this, and this is the only thing. If you want to go the opposite way of, uh, of of Tyler Boyd, for example, because you're starting Higgins and, and Chase, is Zach Taylor is going to see that run defense and go, "Oh boy, my oh, runs up the middle are going to be fantastic this week." Watch you know, you know like what that, else they do. They give up like the mo- they, they give up one of the one of the most big play prone pass defenses in football too, so they can do whatever they want to the Browns. Yeah, so. the Browns don't do anything well except cover slot receivers. It seems like a good opportunity for them to be up two scores in the fourth quarter and give nine yeah. carries to Joe Mixon. I wasn't trying to crap on Mixon. I, I'm pointing out a trend here that they they have become a pass first team. It seems. You throw yeah. to score, you run to win. I get that, but, but you're not going to get nine it. carries on the final drive. That's that's insane. Nine carries in the final drive of a game is is uncommon. I was just comparing him to the other guys that you drafted later. Yeah, that's fair. I he mean, I over him. I would start him over Pearson and and Etienne personally. But if you want to go that route, go ahead. Okay. Uh, any interest in Hayden Hurst or uh, or uh, Bryant, Harrison Bryant? Um, Brian is more intriguing to me than Hurst is because I think Hurst are getting five for 38 and that's probably a ceiling unless he scores, um, with Bryant, you know, there's seven targets available on average over the last four games with what Njoku has been getting. And so in a game where they're probably chasing points and that's Jacoby Brissett's kind of go-to space, uh, is, is the tight end in this offense. He could be a good streaming option, but I would prefer Jawan Johnson and Kate Otten, for example, and, and Dolchich. Uh, Heath, Nick Chubb, start Kareem Hunt, sit. Yep. Yeah, Mari Cooper, borderline number two, right in the middle of that McLaurin Pittman group. And Donovan Peoples Jones is a de- yes. decent number three receiver. I think he's really interesting. He has been pretty big play reliant. I mentioned on the waiver wire show that his A dot is the lowest it's been, but Dave pointed out that it's actually been pretty high the last three weeks or three of his last four games when he's been good. He's had a higher A dot and he's had a big play, a 37 to 42 yard catch in three of his last four games. Um, but no Njoku, uh, and yeah, I would just want like I think I might have to start him in a league this week. Is he? Did he crack your top thirty-six? Is Donovan Peoples Jones the number three guy? No. Yes, in non PPR, I start him over Deontay Johnson. Okay. Um, all right, that's it for today's show. Thank you very much, and we'll save. Uh, we have one more game left, but we'll save it for tomorrow. Tennessee at Houston. Although I could probably do it in five seconds. That's we'll the game of the week. Five. That's the game. (laughs) Uh, For Jamie and Heath, I'm Adam. Talk to you on tomorrow's episode of Fantasy Football Today. We actually have a live stream at 2 p.m. Eastern on YouTube.com slash Fantasy Football Today. See you there.